Thanks for watching. This is another David the Dog Trainer and David the Dog Walker production. We are here with Tiffany. This is our fifth day working on walk training. Hey guys. <laughs> I've set up a little puzzle toy over there for her. I want to see if she interacts with that at all. She might not. It's a very stimulating environment that we're in right now. All right. She goes, what's this weird device? What's this thing? I recommend puzzle toys to all my clients. Teach your dog to work for his food. The one thing that'll be tricky is there's a lot of stuff going on out here. I basically wanted to just bring that device out because uh, I recommend these food puzzle toys to almost everybody. But because there's so much that's going to attract her attention out here, she may not interact with it. This is also kind of a more advanced version of the puzzle toy. It's very hard to get the food rewards out. Good girl! Which is good for dogs who have been, who have experienced puzzle toys before and have had success with them. But for a beginner, it might be a bit too complex. The recall is important for every dog. Here's one way to practice. What we'll do is, since we did find the flexi, we're gonna run around and continue our recall training. So I bet you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run around, I'm gonna run around with the dog, I'm gonna call her towards me, I'm gonna give her a snack, I'm gonna tell her to go away, repeat, repeat, repeat. Let's slow that down and take another look. So what we can see already that's really exciting is that when I stop moving, Tiffany is already beginning to run towards me, which is really fantastic. We have been practicing a bit in our first four days. So this is a really great response we're seeing from her now. A dog is not gonna work for something they don't find valuable. Training challenge one. She took the first two bites. She took the first two uh, food rewards that I had for her. She uh, did not take the next two. So I'm gonna get a slightly more palatable reward object, at least in, I've interviewed many dogs and they seem to like what I have over there in the car better than these things. And we'll see how that does. We'll also say hi to this uh, nice volunteer. Hey, could you volunteer? Could I introduce you to this dog? Teaching a dog to greet people with manners can be challenging. Who's that? Tiffany, sit. No. <laughs> sit. Good girl. Good. Oh, no. Sit. Good girl. Good job. Come on. Good job. Good job. Tiffany, sit. Good girl. Will you take it now? Good job. Thank you. Whoa! Oh, no. Too bad. That's not good. Nope. Tiff, sit. Good girl. You know, that wasn't perfect, but Tiffany's still learning how to greet people with uh, finesse. We saw four on the floor. We saw sit. We saw jumping up. So all of these behaviors are very common when dogs are greeting. Good girl. Hi, fuzzy dog. Sit. Good, good girl. Ask her again, please. Tiffany, sit. Good. Good girl. Now, if you come over towards her, just ask her to sit every time she hops up. Tiffany, sit. Good girl. Tiffany, sit. Good girl. Good job. Thanks, Tiff. Good girl. Good girl. Get a little tuckered out. <laughs> A head collar is a wonderful management tool. Tiff, sit. So with the head collar on, she's a lot easier to uh, control and she's a lot more unhappy, at least for now. And until she learns sit, stay for greeting, especially with her people, the people that are with her all the time, the head collar will give them kind of an edge or a bit of an opportunity to guide the dog gently with the device and and what? What is the word? And discourage 
jumping up behavior during greetings. So the head collar, uh, it's a management tool. It, it can be used for training, but really what we're doing here is if I'm holding on to the device or the leash and the device is on, it's much harder for her to pull me around. It's much easier for me to control her head, which then control the head, control the dog. It's an old training truth. Dogs use their mouths for many different reasons. So a lot of dogs, especially if they're under-socialized and aren't used to greeting people and they're not sit. getting enough exercise, Activity, sit. they'll use their mouth, sit, they'll use their mouth in an attempt to engage play, uh, even inappropriately, at least by our standards. So she's putting her mouth on this person in order to try to get this individual to play with her because she is, uh, in my opinion, play starved. Now, this is just an opinion. I can't tell you that's exactly why she's using her mouth in that way, but it's an educated guess, and that's the, that's the best I can do. It did not hurt. Right. So obviously it was not aggressive. Uh, aggressive, we're going to define aggression as the intent to do harm. I don't think this dog wants to harm anybody. All right. So the mouth, using the mouth uh, is normal dog behavior. Uh, it's, it's used to communicate. So I think she was trying to tell Angela, will you play with me, please? So Angela won't oblige, but I will. I'll run around a bit with her and see if she wants to run. Ready? Come on! Most people want to train their dog to walk on one side or the other. So we have uh, still this kind of boring variety of snack that hopefully she'll take. That's what I want to do. So I want to walk with the dog and reward, reward her for walking on my left side. Ready? So what you'll see with some variety of food reward when you're rewarding the dog, you'll see the dog reorient towards you in a kind of, I can't wait to have another one of those looks. It's not happening with these snacks. It could be the snack itself, or it could be the day, or the dog, or the environment. So we're gonna try one more variety, and we'll see what happens. Oh, we're gonna try a different variety. So one thing I always check is, uh, what's the funk factor, right? Usually, the smellier the treat, the smellier the food reward, the more appealing to the dog. The worse it smells to me, the better it smells to them, right? Mostly true. So we have freeze-dried liver, and uh, I don't know, dehydrated, Pancreas. Pancreas, perhaps. That's what it smells like to my friend Rand here. So, again, this freeze-dried liver, it's hard to break up into smaller pieces because it crumbles. But this size is actually kind of big. I wish it was a bit smaller because I can reward more frequently with smaller pieces and not worry about the dog, you know, getting a saddlebag or two. You know what I mean? Okay, so here's a handful. Let's see if this motivates her more. So eventually I want the dog to sit when I stop moving, but I have to show her that's what I wanted to do. She also has to learn to sit on my left side. Thank you for watching. This has been another David the Dog Trainer and David the Dog Walker production. Stay tuned for more episodes with Tiffany.